Welcome to our Vision Campus. In this video, I will explain what an interface is and what various kinds of interfaces you will find on industrial cameras. I would also like to talk about what criteria are important when selecting an interface. There will be a practical example to illustrate the factors you need to take into account when selecting the right interface. What is an interface? The interface is an essential piece of the communications infrastructure. In layman's terms, the interface is the portion of the system used to connect one system to other systems. So a closed system uses its interface to react to or communicate with another closed system. The term interface is primarily associated with computer technology. It refers to the various hardware interfaces that are used to link two systems to each other physically. For example, I can use a USB interface to connect my thumb drive to the computer. On a smartphone, I can use an analog interface, the headphone jack, to listen to my music. It's also possible to have an interface between man and machine referred to as the user interface. There are different types of interfaces used in industrial cameras. The most obvious is a cable. It is used to connect the camera to a PC. Yet interfaces encompass much, much more. They include plugs, cables, software, all defined by international standards. The cable and plug, first and foremost, have purely physical properties that must harmonize at a purely mechanical level for the connection to function. It is important that the plug and cable match the interface being used. Another important group of factors are the electrical properties. Electronic devices pass data to each other using electrical signals, meaning via currents and voltages. The interface standards thus serve as essential set of definitions of how the electrical signals should be formatted to allow the participating systems to communicate with one another. What voltage levels should be used to transfer the communication signals and across how many wires? How densely should the information be transmitted through the limited number of wires? In interface standards such as USB 3 Vision, resolves these complicated details, meaning that you, as the user, don't have to worry about them. One of these details is, for instance, the speed. The speed is often defined using the term bandwidth. An interface can have, for example, a bandwidth of 400 megabytes per second. As a comparison, 400 megabytes per second would allow you to download a full album of uncompressed music in one second. For systems to communicate with one another, they need to share a language to do so. It ultimately boils down to how should the information be organized to facilitate communication? How will the communication partners initiate contact? And how will it be understood? Who is supposed to talk? Who is supposed to listen? These decisions are laid out in the protocol. It defines the grammar, the function of the signals, and the way in which the communication parties will synchronize themselves to ensure nothing is lost. Imagine that someone calls you, and the person on the other end of the line is talking backwards, in a language that you wouldn't understand <laughs> even if it were being spoken normally. Even if everything else was working properly, the communication protocols wouldn't match. A different scenario involves mismatched signal properties. In that case, it would be a bit like trying to talk to someone on the phone who speaks your language, but is doing it so quickly or quietly that you can't understand anything. If the physical aspects of the interfaces aren't matched, it would be like trying to plug a full pair of studio headphones with a large plug into the headphone jack on a smartphone. 
There are also a few properties that affect the use of devices in terms of the interface. An interface is known as plug-and-play compatible if the user can launch into using the new components immediately after connecting it, without having to install new device drivers or otherwise go through a configuration process. Hot plugging refers to the ability to connect to or remove devices from a computer while it is running. The computer's operating system detects the change automatically. A USB interface supports both plug and play and hot plugging. Cable length matters too. Each interface supports a maximum cable length. You will need to think about how far the camera will be placed from the PC. Last but not least is the cost of the necessary hardware. It's important to keep the overall operating costs as low as possible for the user. Special adapter cards are needed for some interfaces, while others are available on any standard PC and require no additional investment. What interfaces are found on industrial cameras? The following are the most common you will very possibly know or at least have heard of since they are frequently used beyond cameras as well. The most common interfaces are USB 3, Gigabit Ethernet, Camera Link and Firewire. What are the differences between these interfaces and what benefits does each offer? I will explain using a chart. Which interface is fastest? Camera Link has the highest bandwidth and as such can transfer data faster than the others. Unlike USB, however, it is not plug and play compatible. Gig E supports the longest cable length. You've likely already noticed that there are several criteria that help to determine which interface is right. Let's wrap things up here by going through one small example to show how you can approach things. Vacation season means lots of people on the roads. Meet Jenny, a development engineer. She's been tasked with developing a speed monitoring system that can be deployed flexibly in various places and applications. The system should provide images to identify the license plates and drivers of speeding cars. Now is precisely the right time for this. Safety first. Jenny needs two cameras, one monochrome, one color. The monochrome camera takes the image of the license plate. The background on the license plate is typically very light, with numbers and letters designed to stand out well against that setting. The color camera is used to take a wider picture, allowing for clear identification of the driver and vehicle. So, which is the right interface for your application? Cable length, resolution, bandwidth, costs, and interface specific properties are the crucial criteria for selection. How long should the cable be? 5 meters or less? Between 5 and 10 meters or up to 100 meters? For this solution, the camera and embedded PC for processing the data are placed in one compact housing, meaning that a cable length of just 50 centimeters is enough. Which resolution is needed on the camera? In Europe, the numbers and letters on license plates are printed quite large. 2 megapixels of resolution are enough. In the USA, by contrast, 5 megapixels are typically needed, since the numbers and letters are smaller. The highway in this case is in Europe, so 2 megapixels are enough. How many frames per second should be captured? This is known as the camera's frame rate. 30 frames per second are more than enough in this scenario. The resolution and frame rate are simply multiplied to calculate the necessary bandwidth. At a resolution of 2 megapixels and 30 frames per second, we need a bandwidth of 60 megabytes per second. So now we've got the key pieces in place. 
For cost reasons, the camera connection should be as quick and simple as possible. This directs Jenny towards a plug-and-play ready interface. Should images be captured in real time? In many cases, cars are driving much too fast on the roads. These are the vehicles whose license plates should be captured, and that in a highly legible way. Real-time compatibility ensures that the images are acquired if, and only if, the measurement system detects a vehicle driving too quickly, but then without delay. Otherwise, the image could be of the wrong vehicle. And the system costs. They should, of course, be as low as possible. As little as possible should be paid for the processor unit. A moderately powered processor is enough, and a camera with a USB 3 interface is recommended. That interface involves a very low processor load, meaning the processor can concentrate its entire performance on the application itself. Very little processor performance is required for an image transmission via USB 3. So for Jenny's application, a camera with a USB 3 interface is appropriate, as it fulfills these requirements and offers the following additional benefits as well. With USB 3, she can use a standardized hardware interface. The USB 3 Vision standard ensures stable, flawless image transfer. It offers simple deployment thanks to plug and play and hot plucking functions. It has low CPU load, low signal latency and good real-time compatibility. It offers energy management with low power consumption and results in a single cable solution. And it has a very attractive price. At the start of this video, I mentioned that there are many other interfaces beyond USB. There are also a variety of different manufacturers as well. Secondary details such as plug, electronics, driver and data transfer are uniform and should function properly for an interface. Therefore, interface standards have been defined by experts for a variety of different applications. This means that when designing a machine vision system, you can focus first and foremost on defining the requirements for the application itself. The choice of interface is based on those. Jenny opted for USB 3 for her camera because it offers an innovative interface that is ready for the future. It's the perfect choice for a traffic-related application. Careful consideration of the right interface for your own application is always recommended to ensure you'll get the most out of your system. Thanks for watching.